It's new product time, Lady Ada. Hey, can we, um, okay, yeah. Yes, yeah, it's new product time. Okay, yeah. first up is conductive Velcro. Yeah, this is cool stuff. It's conductive little... Velcro. This is awesome. This is and why you start cute. a company, because you can actually get things like conductive Velcro. Well, we have to buy a lot. <laughs> have to, no, it's expensive. It's it's so expensive. But, but we got conductive Velcro. We got it. We do. We did get some conductive Velcro. It's, it's nylon, and it's silver-plated, um, which makes it kind of expensive. Um, but it's basically just like the hook and loop tape you're, you're, you're love and you're used to, except it's uh, fully conductive. So let's um, test it with a multimeter. For those that do not believe. Is hooks or loops better for positive? Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Um, so let's all right. check it out. You want to go to the overhead? Yeah. This overhead want, it wants to be around all night. Okay. Now we've got this overhead. So we are here. We have the hook and loop tape. We have some hook and we have some loop. We can... Make annoying yeah. sounds. Um, each one is conductive. I've got my multimeter here. So it's beeping. And then yeah. um, not conductive, but when you attach them, conductive. Yeah. And it's uh, only a couple ohms. Hold on. So great for wearable electronics, obviously. Yeah, so it's like three ohms, two ohms. It's kind of, it's, it's multimeter's not great at measuring really um, low yeah. resistance stuff but basically you know it's extremely low power i wouldn't put more than like 100 milliamps to this stuff although it should be able to handle more yeah um but yeah it's like an ohm or less um we have some stats on the site um it's really expensive stuff so we're only going to sell three inch pieces because that's the only way we could do it so it would be like seven dollars and fifty cents um but yeah. you know this is the stuff i i looked far and wide and could not find anything else that would work as good Futuristic cool it. stuff, and we got yeah. it here in the Adafruit store. So great for wearable projects. We're yeah. we're adding a we're adding like a new um, pro uh, product for the yeah. wearables department. Could it like act as a simple switch? That'd be a great way. So it's like a bag, mm -hmm. and when you close the Velcro, it would you know power a project or Max something. Max current voltage rating. Uh, let's check the stats. Also, check the stats on the also just mentioned it. Yeah. Okay. okay. Next up, um, put these little boards. These should be cute. I love these things. Yeah, these are actually the, these photos are much better than showing them on the overhead. So okay. I'll just show yeah, we'll them do that. that way. Um, so these are little FPC sticks. I designed these for for me because I needed them. I had yeah. to d um, connect some um, flex um, circuits to a breadboard, and they're really hard to do without um, a flex connector. But flex connectors are always like different yeah. sizes, and like there there's a couple different pitches. And um, I didn't want to create a, a separate breakout board for every time I had a flex connector yeah. I wanted to use. So instead, I was like, oh, I know, I'll, I'll just make a stick, and then you can, can attach any connector. And so on one side is 0.5 millimeters, which is actually the most popular. Yeah. Every, almost everything is 0.5 millimeter pitch. Yeah. It's a very fine pitch. And the other side is 0.1, uh, sorry, 1.0 millimeter pitch. But you can see here I have a, a 2 millimeter pitch connector. It's a little bit more for like advanced um, hacker use yeah. for people who are, you know, they, they end up getting a sensor or a display or something they have to interface with and it only has an FPC, like a flexible connector. I like your style, Lady Ada, because you're like, here's a tool that I made for me, but I would like to share it with the world. Here it is. Well, you know what? If I was going to make one, I might as well make 200. May as well make 1,000. All right. Let's keep moving on. Okay. All right. Bluetooth dongles. We've got them. Um, this is part of uh, some ongoing Bluetooth things we're doing. Yeah. Um, these are good ones. Yeah, these are actually pretty good. You these like are them. Bluetooth 4, and I've noticed that a lot of times when you're buying um, Bluetooth modules for about this price, uh, they're not 4.0, they're 2.0, and so a lot of stuff doesn't work with them. These are 4.0. This chipset is, is is like the standard CSR Bluetooth 4 chipset. Um, I've tested it a lot on Windows 7 because I've been doing a lot of Bluetooth experimentation. Um, I got it to pair with a Bluetooth keyboard on a Raspberry Pi. So I'm assuming it works for like any other use with a Raspberry Pi. It, you know, it definitely came up no problem. There was no driver installation issues, no yeah. errors. Um, it should work with a Mac, except all of our Macs here have Bluetooth built in. But like if you yeah. don't, it should work. This is a classic um, uh, Bluetooth chip. There's only two out there. There's one from CSR and one from Broadcom. They're both supported by everything. So you know, while I haven't tested it on every single Linux distribution, um, so far the Raspberry Pi and uh, Windows 7 have no problem with it. Yeah. And uh, Windows definitely will support this in the future, so Windows 8 should also have no problem. And uh, they're really cute and they're small. And yeah, they're 4.0, so they're they're backwards compatible with Bluetooth 2, and which is the most common sort of hobbyist yeah. Bluetooth uh, 2.1, as well as uh, Bluetooth Low Energy 4.0, as long as your operating system supports Bluetooth yeah. Low Energy. 
And we are working really hard to fix Bluetooth for hobbyists, for the world. We're doing some really cool stuff. Yeah. But I have to get a module. Because my, com my computer doesn't have Bluetooth. Very soon, everyone who likes Bluetooth and wants to do cool projects will know the word blue fruit. Have I said too much? You said too much. Have I said too much? Okay. Yes. Let's keep moving. Damn All right. your eyes. Yeah, next up. Okay. Ears. Damn your ears. Yeah. All right, next up. Oh, Peltier's. You know what? Actually, let's... Um, Let's you want to do, skip around? Yeah, let's do no. Let's talk about these and then we'll do the the demo. Um, you want to do these one. buttons first? No, 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 no. We'll do the we'll, we'll do the Peltiers. Okay, we'll do the Peltiers right now. And then after this, we'll skip to the module and then I'll show all at once. Okay. Um, so Peltier modules, we we has them. Um, we ordered them a while ago and they finally showed up. These are great. We have um, two Peltier modules. Uh, we have a 12 volt 5 amp one, which is this bigger one, and I'll show them on the overhead as well. Yeah. And we also have a 5 volt one amp one, which is kind of what sometimes you see in like USB pluggy coolers and stuff. So Peltier modules are really interesting. Maybe a piece for Peltier, we'll, we'll do a video about that. But um, they're a device where um, they actually work in two ways. They basically convert temperature differential to voltage differential, which is really neat, actually, if you think about it. Uh, and they're actually one of the few devices that can generate cold. It's very hard to generate cold. Uh, it's easy to generate heat, but it's hard to, to generate anti-heat. Um, so when you put a voltage across um, this device, the ceramic plates with these uh, thermocouples, not thermocouples, but uh, thermoelectric diodes, I think I'm, I'm trying to remember what exactly the item is. I don't remember the exact semiconductor uh, word for it, but you can also look it up on Wikipedia. When you put a voltage across them, um, 12 volts or 5 volts, uh, there's a temperature differential. So one side gets hot and one side gets cold. Um, so the good thing is that you can generate heat or cold. The problem is, is that if you want to generate uh, cold or heat, you have to remove the temperature from the other side because otherwise it'll conduct through. So for example, um, if you want to make a, something cold, usually they're used for cooling things off because again, it's easy to heat stuff up, use a resistor um, to heat anything, but it's hard to cool things down. You have to get the heat away from the other side as fast as possible. So that's just something you have to think about when you're making these uh, projects with these is you can't just turn it on and expect just cold air to just appear forever on the other side. You have to get the hot air off from away from it so a heat sink is required. So All right. for that reason, we also have a full assembly. So um, instead of kind of being like, oh, you're on your own, you have to sort of figure out how to make your own um, uh, Peltier. You're dealing with Adafruit. We're not just going to do that. No. So I wanted to have, well, some people want to have the modules because they want to fit into something or they have it, something they can heat sink. But this is a full assembly for um, a Peltier. This is actually a, even a higher quality Peltier than the one we got um, before. It's a little bit more expensive. This one can, can create a, a better differential with um, lower power. Um, and this one, it, I'll show it in detail, but it has a full heat sink attached to um, a fan. And so you can see here that the heat sink is that kind of like fingery piece of aluminum. And then the Peltier is at the very top and it's bolted down. And then there's a 12 volt fan. So you run the whole thing off of like 12 volts, about 5 amps, and um, it gets really, really cold on the other side. So okay. let's go to the overhead and I can shut off. Okay, everyone get it out of your system. Just say cool. That's cool, cool, cool. Just go ahead and do it. It's really just, cool. Just get it out. Just get it out. Just do it. Okay. All right. So carefully. The problem is that this is... Oh, look at that. Hold on. Icy. Yeah, it is icy. So this is... Brr, it's cold in here. This is a... Uh, Peltier that I've had running since the show started, yeah. and you can see there's actually um, ice. Yeah. Maybe I'll scratch some off with a pen so you can see. So there's like a layer of ice on it. It's like a maybe a millimeter or two thick. And um, I have a little temperature gauge here, and I can maybe stick this on. And. Yeah. Uh, I had this working before, but it's kind of tough to get it to, yeah. to stick properly. <clears throat> but I got it down to like four degrees, negative, um, negative four, negative. Negative eight, four. Negative eight degrees. Hold on. This might require two. Cool. Degrees. Okay, hold on. There <laughs> I, I got keep it. Saying cool. This is tough. Okay. So let's watch it as it cools down. Um, yeah. So you can see the ice and and the temperature is uh, decreasing because this is a kind of a slow sensor. You can also hear the fan a little bit. Let's the fan. Yeah, not really. Okay, so no negative 8.8, negative 1.1. 1. 1. 
So I think at the coldest I got it ever was negative 10. It depends on what the ambient temperature is because, you know, if it's, if it's a warm, hot day, it won't be able to get as cold because it, it, it only makes the temperature differential. So it's like it'll make it, you know, 30 degrees Celsius colder than it is around it. So, yeah, I mean, if, if I let this sit, this would eventually um, get all the way down to, like, you know, negative 10 degrees. But, yeah, so this is an, an ice-making device. It draws about 5 amps from... 12 volts, there's a fan. So it comes to you like this. It's fully assembled and yeah, it's, it's icy. So, ooh, that's cold. Um, and yeah, I can take the ice off. And then um, to show what the Peltier looks underneath. Oh, and then um, the Peltier is actually here. It's, um, there's a foam insulator, which is a good idea. And then there's an aluminum plate on the top, which you can also see in the um, product photos. And um, there's just two screws to hold it down. And it, you, there's some uh, conductive thermal paste as well to uh, keep it nice and thermally conductive. And then um, just to show what the Peltiers look like, not in an assembly, here they are. This is a 12-volt Peltier. So it's a couple millimeters thick. It's about um, 40 millimeters by 40 millimeters, so like yeah, two and a half inches, whatever. Um, comes with two wires. You connect red to power and black to ground, and you know they go. You are making cold, and this is a five volt one. Um, even though this is a five volt one amp, I, I, saw, I found it draws a little bit more. It draws like one and a quarter, one and a half amp. So you might want to make sure you have a two amp power supply for this guy. Another thing is, it is possible if you have a temperature differential, you can generate electricity from it. They're bidirectional. But they're, these are not, uh, they're not designed for that, so they're not as efficient for that as some other Peltiers. There are some Peltiers that are designed specifically for generating electricity from. These will do it, but they're kind of like not really good for it. Sort of how a um, generator is the same as an engine running backwards, but mm. there's generator yeah. engines, and then there's engines that are meant for cars. And even though the, the um, idea is the same, they are tuned for that specific use. So if you know if you have something that's really hot next to something that's really cold, you can generate a voltage across it. But um, yeah, it's like you got some cool stuff in the store here, lady. It's kind of harder. Yeah, I just like, I just sneak in next week. Okay. That's All right. Good. Next up, right. um, we're gonna keep moving on here. We've got this uh, button thing. Yeah, these buttons are button interesting. Button thing. <laughs> um, so I wanted to add to the uh, we had a three by four it's matrix. A keypad thing. It's like really key keypads. Yes, this is a four pin keypad, and it's not matrixed. So there's actually five pins. One common and then four pads. They're named, numbered one through four. I just thought it'd be cool to have a smaller keypad. Um, you can use it with anything. We give you some header. I can show it on the overhead. It's flexible. Um, it has an adhesive backing. <coughs> Maybe we'll overhead. Yeah, I'm going to go with the overhead. We're getting there. It's cool. Okay, so um, this is the buttons. So yeah, you can press the buttons. There's, um, we give you this header, but you can also just stick some wire in this socket if you would like. Ooh, this Peltier is icy over here. Okay, nice Peltier gone. Um, and then, yeah, there's the flexi cable, and then this is also flexible. And then on the back is this paper backing, which you can remove. Is there a temperature rating for the... Uh Membrane. Folks wanted to know. That. You know, I wouldn't use it in like anything yeah. outside of like standard electronics, which is I think zero degrees to seventy degrees centigrade. Um, but even seventy seems a little bit high. Maybe don't use it above like fifty degrees centigrade. They're not. They're really meant for like indoor use. They're not meant for outdoor use. And they're not meant for like you know extreme situation use. But yeah, it's a simple, simple membrane button. You press it and it'll work. Yeah. We also have... We have the other type. The other type. Yeah. So show them the other type. Yeah. The other type... Actually, I like this one a lot. This is very interesting. So this is an extra long um, single button keypad with an LED embedded in it. Oh, is they want to know if this is waterproof? Um, it's weatherproof. I, you can't put it underwater, but, you know, it would survive a splashing, if that makes sense. Yeah. It's not, it's not you know, it's not like... The people, like, when they say waterproof, it means, like, you can oh, dunk it underwater. You can't dunk it underwater. Fold enough so it could fit through a panel that could be glued to the other side. I, I think so. This? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you, you could, can. you could, yeah, that's, a, that's a clever way to do it, too. Yeah, you could, I mean, yeah. it kind of would be bendy and it might crease a little bit, but, yeah, you could do that. 
Um, yeah. But yeah, so this is a keypad with a single button and LED built in. And you know, the LED is separate than the button, but you can connect it so that the button also turns on the LED if you want, just by connecting the LED through the button. And I'll actually show that. Okay. And on the back, you can see how it's connected. Um, there's a button, and then there's there's three pins. One is common, button, and then the LED um, positive and minus. So it's pretty easy to uh, wire up any way you want. But yeah, the nice thing about it is how long it is. So let me show you how long it is. It is long. Okay. Long cables. Long. Oh, do you want me to go to yeah. uh, Sonia? So long. Well, that's the. Uh, that's just the back. Yeah. But this is how long it is. Yeah. It's so long. It's like a foot and a half, maybe. Um, it's pretty long. And I got this um, particularly because I thought it would be very good for wearable applications because it's soft. You can sew through it. And then you can have this on your outside of your jacket or your bag, and you can press the button, and it will light up to tell you if your project's on or not. Yeah. Or, like, to indicate, like, it's doing something. So I thought that would be kind of cool. So I'll show it on the red. Okay. Oh, got some. No, 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 I got it. I just have to, have to move my. So I have a little Arduino here, and it's just providing power. And I connected it um, so power is on one pin and ground is on the opposite pin. So actually, the LED will light up when I push the button because it will close the connection between um, the power and ground across the LED. So, yeah, so that's the LED. So it's a little red LED. It's a surface mount LED, but it's fairly bright. Um, it's a little squishy. And then, yeah, it's soft, and, and the um, if you peel off the back, it's adhesive, but you can stitch around the edge, which is kind of my, my thought process about what people might want to do with this tactile switch on a, on a rope. Um, it's also, it's, it's weatherproof. I wouldn't call it waterproof. Uh, I don't think it's meant for outdoor use, but, you know, if you want to put it in a project that goes outside, that's probably fine. I mean, it's just not... Yeah, it's meant for like indoor use. On the general. product page, we have the current usage in the of the LED. This is a 20 milliamp LED standard. Yeah, already LED. LED 8 is already on it. Standard LED, red LED. You can look up any red LED specs, and it'll be exactly yeah. the same. Okay, and with that, that was new products.